be defeated. The people, united, will never be defeated. Yeah, I, I, uh, Ellen Graves is here, housing for people, not profit. Right. And that's what it should be. We should have houses and not worry about all the prop, the banks getting all the prop money. Uh, we're here to support the Tucker and Mendes family as they are facing no-fault eviction from Aurora Bank and Deutsche Bank. <laughs> Porque ellos están este, peleando un desalojo sin culpa por los bancos Aurora y Deutsche Bank. Ooh. Up with the people. Yeah, yeah. Down with the banks. Yeah, yeah. Up with the people. Yeah, yeah. Down with the banks. Boom, boom. Up with the people. Yeah, yeah. Down with the banks. Boom, boom. Arriba con la gente. Yeah, yeah. Abajo con los bancos. No, no. no. Arriba con la gente. Bienvenidos, esto está organizado por la Asocia Asociación de Inquilinos de Bancos de la organización Springfield No, no One Leaves, Nadie Se Mude. Y este, and today we would just want to, you know, acknowledge some people that are here um, and different organizations. Um, I, I, I see people from the Pioneer Valley Project. Can we give them a hand? Yay! I see folks from Out Now, Springfield. I see people from Arise for Social Justice. Yay. I see uh, folks from Labor Unions. Can we get them? Give them a hand. I don't. Yay. Yay. Uh, we have a representative from uh, Senator Kendara's office. James Warren is here. Yay. Oh, we got people from Neighbor to Neighbor. We got Laura here. Yeah. Yay. Le queremos dar la bienvenida a toda la gente que está aquí. También le queremos dar las gracias a toda la gente que este, está aquí representando organizaciones. Tenemos a gente de PVP, tenemos gente de Out Now, gente de Arise for Social Justice, uh, de Vecino a Vecino, de Springfield y Holyoke. Y también tenemos a gente que es parte de sindicatos de parte del de área de Springfield. Entonces vamos a darles un aplauso. Can we give them a big hand? Well, today we're here for the Mendez family, Anna and Jose. They've lived with their... Now, you know I can't do that. <laughs> I'm not even supposed to be in the sun, so... Uh, Anna and Jose have lived here with their daughter at the home they bought in 2006. In 2009, they fell behind when Jose lost hours at his job as a contractor. They went to Aurora Bank for help in a modification. Aurora granted them three different trial modifications. The Mendez family paid all 15 months of the trial payments, and Aurora told, then Aurora told them they didn't qualify for permanent modification. They moved to Fort Close. Now, Aurora is moving to evict them, even though they can afford to pay rent or even buy their house back at the current market value. Now, we have posters around you on the ground of what happens when the banks foreclose. Someone could stand one of those up. We don't want this neighborhood to have these type of empty homes that are boarded up and destroyed by fire and theft and all kind of vandalism. And why can't Aurora accept rent or the market value of this property? Why leave a family homeless and a home vacant? Our big question, our big statement, is to end no-fault evictions after foreclosure. That's right. So this is why we're here for the Mendez family this evening and for the Tucker family tomorrow night. They've all faced similar stories they can now afford to pay rent or buy back their homes. But the banks won't negotiate. They won't even listen. Their whole thing seems to be to punish these people. Well, they got bailed out. What happened to us? We got thrown out. We got thrown out. We got thrown out. That's it. And that's one of our favorite chants, right? They get bailed out. We get thrown out. We're here to try to make sure people don't get thrown out of their homes when they can afford to own or rent these homes back. And so we want to say boo when we say desalojo sin culpa, which is um, no fault eviction. So can we do that? No. Bueno, entonces aquí estamos apoyando a la familia. Y no solo es la familia este, Mendez, sino que también la familia Tucker este, tienen fecha de desalojo para el primero de agosto, que es el miércoles. Entonces mañana vamos a tener otra vigilia para apoyar a la, a la familia. 
Pero nuestro, nuestro intento, lo que queremos hacer aquí es que crecer un movimiento donde detiene todo el desalojo sin culpa. Porque nosotros creemos que nadie debería ser desalojado, específicamente si están ofreciendo a pagar la renta y pagar otra hipoteca que la familia Méndez y Tucker se han ofrecido a hacerlo. Entonces, muchas gracias y vamos a comenzar. Este, voy a presentar a, a la señora Méndez. So, thank you everyone. Um, and now I'm going to introduce Ms. Méndez. Uh, buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Bienvenidos a todos. Por, eh, les doy las gracias a todos por estar acá ayudándonos a darnos soporte aquí eh, en esta que nos quieren desalojar de esta casa. So I want to thank everyone uh, for coming out today and really supporting us in our fight to keep our home. Yeah. 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 So my husband and I are really thankful and unfortunately my husband can't be here today, but we are really grateful. En el año 2009, eh, mi esposo empezó a, a bajar el trabajo y por eso no podemos pagar la hipoteca. So, en 2009, mi uh, husband's uh, job situation became critical and, uh, and he lost uh, hours. And so now we had to, uh, you know, get behind on, some, um, on our payments and, uh, and, and not you know, and not make payments to our mortgage. Uh, they, they never uh, stopped making payments. They would always just make late payments. And that's what she just clarified. En agosto, ya ellos nos dijeron de que, pues, no, no querían esperar, así que estuviéramos pagando tarde. Agosto de... In August of 2009, uh, the bank no longer would uh, take our, our payments. <laughs> En ese mes, entonces nosotros hablamos con ellos y les dijimos que quería que nos hicieran una modificación. Ellos aceptaron hacer la primera modificación donde pagamos 530. So, at that point we asked for a modification and uh, the bank accepted and we went into a temporary modification where we paid 530. Where we paid 530 a month. Cuando terminamos de pagar los seis meses, nos dijeron que no calificaban. When we finished uh, with the first temporary modification, the bank told us that we didn't qualify for a permanent modification, and uh, and then. Eh, la, volvimos a hacer otra modificación y entonces nos dijeron que pagáramos por seis meses eh, 899. So then we went into another temporary modification for another six months, where we paid $899 a month. Hicimos una tercera modificación con ellos y nos dijeron que pagáramos $1,320 al mes por seis meses. So then we went into a third temporary modification, and after those six months of paying $1,320, the bank denied a permanent modification. Entonces nosotros pues dijimos, bueno, son $1,300, ¿cómo que no podemos pagar la casa si los hemos estado pagando por seis meses? Él quiere decir que no nos quieren ayudar. So then we said, you know, we're paying 1,320, uh, $1, and that means that we can pay a mortgage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That means these people don't want to work with us. Entonces fue cuando ya ellos el segundo mes, de que ya habíamos terminado los seis meses, nos mandaron la casa que iba a haber Procroach en abril. So two months after we finished the third temporary modification, we received a letter saying that our home was going to be foreclosed. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh. And that's how we got to this situation. So, Señora Mendez, ¿por qué la casa es importante para su familia? Ms. Mendez, why is this home important to your family? Porque nosotros ya tenemos siete meses, siete años de vivir aquí y pues hay muchos recuerdos en la casa que uno no quiere irse de su casa. Siente que esa es su casa de toda la vida. So, 
the reason this house is so important to us is we've lived here for seven years and there's so many memories uh, that make us feel ownership of this house of this home and that's why this home is important to us and that's why we're willing to fight and do anything we can to keep our home Ms. Mendez, what are your demands to our Aurora Bank? Que nos acepte renta. Que que no podemos hacer otra cosa más que nos acepte renta. So to accept rent, that's all we're asking for. Accept rent. We can't do anything else. At least accept rent. So now I'm going to introduce Salu, who is also a leader of the Bank Ten Association. Can we get a shout out for Salu?
great that the banks are, you know, taking away from a home. They told us they were going to help us out, and they did the opposite. They, they're they kicking us out, and I don't feel great. I feel, you know, sad, mad, you know, because they're taking our home away. And you're not going anywhere. What? Yes, I'm going to fight with my parents till we get our home back. And Let us like pay rent at least to do that. That's right. And thank you for joining us. Está este muy este triste de que se tiene que salir de su casa o que le quieren la quieren sacar de su casa y está muy decepcionada con los bancos porque los bancos intentar le, le prometieron ayudar a su familia y en vez los están queriendo sacar de su casa y ella se siente muy este tiene mucho dolor. Y tiene, este, y por lo que están haciendo los bancos en su casa. Y ella no quiere perder todas las memorias que ha tenido aquí, este, desde que tenía ocho años. Entonces, ¿estamos dispuestos a pelear con la familia Méndez y con la joven Jocelyn? Are, are we willing to fight and stand with the young Miss Méndez and her family? Yes. All right. So Patricia is one of the fierce warriors of the Bank Tenant Association. <laughs> Ms. Patricia has uh, fought outside her home with all of us. So do you want to tell us how you're fighting against the banks? Oh. Um, first, my home was foreclosed on. And um, I was, if, um, I had an eviction case, so I went to court and no one showed. Right now, I'm waiting, and it's torture. Yeah. <laughs> but what I can tell the Menendez family to stay on the same beat with the support of the group, we will be heard because we can't do it alone. It's no way. But when they see all of us, they will respond. And I did believe that because Bank Tenant Association at court that day, no one showed. Also, the letter which you write for um, discovery, that helped pretty much. And I think that's what's delaying them right now, the discovery. So hang in there, stay in touch with us, help us out, stay strong, stay as a family, come whenever you can and do whatever you can do to keep us growing. And we will be heard. Thank you. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Everywhere I go.
No. there. 
The folks who slipped it in, fast tracked the bill, and had that had them had them all vote for it, and almost no one knew that new piece was in there. It is the worst kind of undermining of not only our rights as homeowners, our rights as neighbors and a community, but underwriting undermining our very democracy. And that's how much they want to take our homes. They're willing to undermine the very democracy that these guys all got elected to supposedly protect. So anybody who wants to should call the governor, give him an earful about why he has to not sign this bill the way it is, send it back to the legislature to revote this because it is not okay. We have no clear sense that the governor's going to do that, but every single call, like everything else we do, it adds up to something. Call him, tell him it is not okay, and that he's got to send it back to the legislature. I do want to tell you that if we don't succeed in getting it out that way, we've got a couple more tricks up our sleeve. We're going to try and get rid of this, whether we have to go through the courts, whether we have to go through the legislature in a way that they're not used to, but if uh, they're going to require some creativity on our part, we're going to give it to them. What's the name of the bill? Uh, the bill, it's, uh, I can tell you, call and tell them it's the foreclosure bill. That's quite enough. They know there's only one foreclosure bill, and we have made a stink about this. So don't worry about it. Call the governor, tell him not to sign the foreclosure bill, get rid of this language, send it back to the legislature for a vote, and we'll know by the end of tomorrow night whether he does it or not, so be watching. And as we say, when we fight, we win. When we fight, we win. When we fight, we win. We win. Good. Thank you. And, to, and, and therefore, I'm going to introduce uh, Ms. Clemens, who is here to talk about her struggle as a bank tenant, as a uh, bank tenant member. I don't like microphones anyway. It's okay. But my name is Ruth Clements, and I'm a tenant. I live in a house that it was foreclosure by NBC. And uh, it's one of the most frightening things that could ever happen to anyone. So I could imagine when you are a homeowner, I'm only a, a, a tenant, you know. Hey, you count. Yeah, I count. Right. Yeah. And um, the funny thing is that I, I have been paying my rent since day one. I have never stopped. You know, there are times that I haven't been able to eat just to pay my rent. And my rent is $1,200. And nothing is included. But I guess my uh, landlady had other situation that they took her house away. Well, I am going to fight back. All right. All right. I will fight back with everybody and with all my beings. I do have to say a little bit, though. I am very angry. Yeah. I'm really angry. Yeah. Because this is supposed to be the land of opportunity. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And the way the bank is going around taking people's houses mm -hmm. is going to become the land of homeless. That's mm -hmm. right. And to me, I don't, I don't know. This is not a dream place. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to buy a house. But now I kind of, I'm thinking about it. Do I want to buy a house? I don't know. I'm not really sure. Because I really don't want to go through this. Uh, it's very painful. Uh, it's very um, disappointed. Uh, it, it's everything that you can think of that is bad. Yo vivo, mi nombre es Ruth Clemens, y yo vivo en Springfield. Y yo soy un, yo alquilo. La casa donde yo vivo, pago mil doscientos sin nada y estoy guapa. No me gusta lo que está pasando porque a veces yo mejor prefiero pagar mi renta y no comer. Pero la señora que tenía la casa parece que ella gastaba el dinero y yo no sé qué pasó. Que el banco cogió el foreclosure de house. Uh, yo estoy aquí para pelear para la familia Meléndez para la familia Tucker y para pelear para mí, aunque yo no sea dueña de casa. Y estoy guapa, no me gusta lo que está pasando. Uh, dicen que América es, la, es el sitio de, de, de oportunidad, pero si los bancos siguen comprando toda la casa, vamos, América va a ser homeless, porque demasiado gente homeless. And that's all I have to say. And what are we going to do? Stand up, fight back. And what are we going to do? Stand up, fight back. And what are we going to do? Stand up, fight back. Woo! Woo! Deutsche Bank, what do you say? Take their offer and let them stay. Deutsche Bank, what do you say? Take their offer and let them stay. Greedy banks, what do you say? Take their offer and let them stay. Greedy banks, what do you say? Take their offer and let them stay. Take their off and let them stay. Oh.
want money. That's right. That's why this is a story. Because they're asking to pay. They're asking to pay rent. They're asking to pay for the house at the exact same price that an investor from down the street or an investor from New York would buy it for. Right? Right. That $170,000 offer that the Tucker's family is offering to Deutsche Bank is more than they would get on the open market. That's right. And not only that, but PCC is offering to pay for that in cash. Yeah. Fully in cash. That's right. And Deutsche Bank, rather than getting that cash and putting it back on their books and writing off the loss, is choosing to evict and risking the stability and the safety of our neighborhoods, right. our children, our families, our communities, and Springfield as a whole. Yes. That can't stand. No. no! That's unacceptable. That's why we reached out to our elected officials. That's why we reach out to the media. That's why we stand together. Because that cannot stand. It's not unacceptable. Right. And it's not right. So before we close today, we're going to take some time to kind of build together and be here together on the front lawn. We want to thank the Mendez family. Queremos decir gracias a la familia Mendez por invitarle nos a estar en su casa. But hold on, don't start packing or anything. So we're here today particularly because both families, we've had these vigils before at much earlier stages. But we're here today because we're at a much more imminent phase. We're at a much more imminent phase where we're going to be calling on all of your support. All of you as neighbors, all of you as allies, elected officials. We're going to call on all of your support soon. Because the Mendez family has a move out date scheduled for tomorrow. Oh. Hold on. The Tucker family has a move out date scheduled for Wednesday. Oh. What that means is that following the official move out date, if the bank wants to move as quickly as they they are legally allowed to, not that it's morally right, as quickly as they're legally allowed to, the Mendez family could be facing an eviction with a sheriff here as early as Friday morning, and the Tucker family as early as next Monday morning. So we want to lay that, that's part of the reason we're here tonight. We're here tonight to support, but we're also here tonight to start preparing ourselves for what comes next. That's right. We're going to be getting media out. We're going to be getting that both families have sent public letters. Both families have sent another public letter. We've sent press releases. We're asking you all to call Harmon Law Offices and put pressure on Harmon and Aurora Bank to negotiate with the Mendez family. We're going to ask you to do the same thing tomorrow with the Tucker family. And there's a little flyer over there. But if the eviction goes through, we're going to have 48 hours notice. We're going to have 48 hours notice. We have 21 people so far who are both signed up and trained to, if necessary, risk arrest, doing civil disobedience to block the evictions. A lot of them are here today. Um, some of them are allies, like Laura in front of me potentially, although that was a while ago, but Laura in front of me potentially. Um, Chantel, where's Chantel? Chantel, one of our youngest members, um, was trained last week and has said that she would be uh, interested in risking arrest for this most for this movement and for this cause. Um, Deb and Rose, Deb and Rose, who couldn't be here tonight but will be here tomorrow, have said the same. We had ten new members at our meeting last week who said that they would like to be trained in how to do civil disobedience. Um, we had Pocky, who's standing over here with the camera, train a bunch more people last week, and her as well as many other people. So we have people prepared, but we're going to have a short amount of time. So what we need you to do is before you leave tonight, there's a sign-up sheet. We need you to put your phone number. We need you to let us know if you can get text messages. We need you to put your email. We need you to let us know if... Uh, if you're interested in civil disobedience, we're going to be trying to see if we can get another training together. It may be difficult if Friday or Monday is when it happens. There's a chance that it could happen after Friday or Monday. It's any time after the move out date. They have to give 48 hours notice. So if you're interested, 
please sign up. But we're going to be getting to you over email, over phone, over text message, asking other people to call you over Facebook because we're only going to have 48 hours. And we apologize ahead of time if you get the contact six or seven times. We're going to do our best because it's not efficient for us. But you may get it from a couple different places. When you hear that we have 48 hours notice, we're asking you to pick the phone up. We're asking you to go and get on Facebook, to get on email, to let everybody know in the community, in your community, people in your family. We have family members here. Get the news out quickly. We're at Patrice and James's house, and we're fighting for their eviction. They're supposed to go move out by the tomorrow and we're hoping that they don't obviously so we're here to protest the fact that the banks won't Deutsche Bank specifically will not negotiate with them even though they can now afford their homes and home with no problem at all they're both working again and if at the current value of the home they'd have no problem whatsoever making the uh, mortgage payments but Deutsche Bank will not negotiate won't even talk to them and BCC has offered to buy it back so Deutsche Bank wouldn't have to be involved if they simply saw it to BCC. Yes. This is the Tucker family house. That's yes. the upstairs, downstairs. This is their house, and they are in the process of being evicted. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No. Pretty strange. So happening all the time. They have a bank that's willing to pay cash for the property and sell it back to them, so the, the bank would get their money, and they still won't go along with that. They still want to take the house. That's the situation. So what's what are our what are our options? What are well, what's I, the Tucker family option here? Well, I think they have to enforce the the laws of the city, which says that in order to foreclose, the uh, the bank has to put up a, a, a deposit uh, of ten thousand dollars, which they haven't done yet. And I think there's a lot of other avenues that they could take. Uh, but as I understand, this has already been foreclosed on. Is that correct? And it's an eviction. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. So uh, that's more difficult. But still, uh, they should just stay in their house, and uh, no one leaves. That means no one leaves. Uh, my name is Deborah Noel, and I'm in. I'm a bank tenant member, and. Oh, okay. And I'm from Springfield. No one leaves, and I'm also in support of the Tucker family being able to get their home back from uh, Deutsche Bank and hopefully they could get the uh, offer from BCC. Hopefully Deutsche will accept the offer and that's what's important to me so that the Tucker family can have a home and buy it back at an affordable price. So, so let me ask both of you. Um, so. How did, the, how did this community get so mobilized around this issue? Uh, well, people run into hard times and people around here in this neighborhood, they um, were very receptive in knowing that, and knowing that they want their neighbors to stay here. So we went out door to door asking for the community support and they said they would be here and we have other bank tenant members, uh, social media, um, it brings us all together as one so we could have unity. Um, on this issue and support the Tucker family. We're here today because um, Deutsche Bank is trying to foreclose, or well, they foreclosed on us back in 2010. And um, we're here because we're trying to save our home. Um, and because I was out of work for 18 months, um, my, we was lack of income, we had lack of income. And my husband wasn't able to keep up by herself, so we fell behind. And when we did send six months of payment into the bank, they sent it back to us, and then they foreclosed on our home. Wait, wait a minute. So you all were, you had you hit some hard times, you were out of work. Yes, ma'am. You got your jobs back, got your job back. Right. Sent them the money to make up for everything that was, that was lost. Correct. My 
husband's a, a firefighter for Springfield, city of Springfield, for 27 years. I worked for the Massachusetts Turnpike Authority for 14 years, going on 15 years, and I was out of work for 18 months. And then when we did get eight months of the payment up, they ended up sending the payment back and saying that they was getting ready to foreclose on our home, and that's what happened. So you're, you're Patrice Tucker. Patrice Tucker. Patrice Tucker. Yes. And this is your home? Yes. And, and we have three daughters, three beautiful daughters. Two just graduated from East Long Meadow High, and the one that goes to Hampton in the seventh grade. Now, now, so this must have been the most shocking thing. Shocking, devastating, devastating. Sleepless nights, plenty. Sleepless, plenty. So, so these things started happening, and then did you just reach out to this community? How, how did you get all these people? I mean, look, look, I'm just going to pan some of the people here tonight who are supporting you from no one leave we met no one leave through um, you never believe how we found them we found them about a year and nine months ago through state representative Ben Swan office received the email and the lady there Marvina Schubert called because she knew the situation the Tucker family was in Marvina Schubert called and she said there's a, 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 a company name um, no one leave and they're working with people that's losing their home um, that's underwater with the banks. Don't give up. Don't give up. There is help even after oh. foreclosure. Ruben has it over there. We shall not be we shall not be moved. We shall not we shall not be moved just like a tree that's standing by the water. We shall not be moved. as we've been doing so well so far and continue to do so far. And I just wanted to thank some people, everybody that's here tonight. Uh, Mr. Tim Allen from uh, City Council of War 7. Thank he'll you. Here. He'll be here at 8. Oh, he'll be here at 8. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, Mar uh, Marvina Shabrick uh, from Benjamin office. Thank you. Uh, we want to thank also uh, James Warren from uh, Senator Candela's office. Yeah. Uh, we want to say thank you to Dave um, Vignold from uh, former state um, rep representative. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. I am not alone. Thank you. No. I want to thank you all for coming out. Actually, I'm just going to be honest. I love you all for being here. We love you too. We love you too. I want to tell you what happened to my home back in 2010. I was out of work. Actually, let me back it up. We purchased a home back in 2005 uh, for $280,000 predatory loan. Um, I went out of work back in 2010 because of illness, sickness I had. Um, we fell behind in the mortgage, um, and we did send the payment, got caught up. We, we was trying to get caught up, sent the payment in. They ended up sending the payment back two months later. <laughs> Should I move? <laughs> Thank you. Um, a couple of months later, they ended up sending the payment back and saying that they was foreclosing on the home. Um, then we found, actually I found no one leave. They sent the email through Ben Swan office, state representative. My sister-in-law, Marvina Schubert, knew what was going on in my life at the time. She still does. Um, <laughs> And she told me she received an email, Catrice, give no one leave a call, and that's how I found no one leave. They sent us to, we went back and forth to the bank, I mean to the um, court, and they ended up, you know how the court is, <laughs> figure it, you know. And so then we ended up going to BCC, which is a good bank in Boston. Um, they approved my husband for the, the loan of the house, and Dush Bank would not respond. Harvey Johnson, I'm her oldest daughter. I actually don't reside here anymore. Um, I live in Worcester. But I have a lot of memories in this house. And 
My mom physically, <laughs> mentally, and financially, she deserves this home. She's been through a lot. And please don't let these people take this home from my mom. She needs it, and we need it. My daughter, she's three years old. She don't know no other grandma's home. She don't know nothing else. And we just love you guys, and I thank you for coming. later I I went to Deutsche Bank and asked them for a modification mm -hmm. after several months of sending in paperwork they refused me they wouldn't they couldn't give me an answer said, you need more paperwork more paperwork more paperwork I went to a third party uh, paid seventeen hundred dollars American law residential out of Florida trying try to buy my way into a modification after six months with them they said, I didn't send them enough work. We ain't helping you no more. Oh. Uh, uh, big phony scam. Um, I then, uh, uh, back in 2011, when I received, got work again, I filed uh, Chapter 13. Um, then come, two months later, after making payments, I tore my, rotor, my left rotor cuff. I was out of work. Um, couldn't make the payments on the house. Or the you know for the um, for the bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. So now I, I face foreclosure in in January of this year. Now I'm facing the eviction, mm -hmm. and I'm not going nowhere, folks. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. The people united will never be defeated. Patrice and James Tucker and their family have lived in Springfield most of their lives, and have been employed in Springfield. Because of health reasons, Catrice had to leave her job, and James was left to swing the mortgage by himself. And now that Catrice is better and has returned to work, the Tucker family can now afford to pay rent and even buy their home at fair current market value. Please, Deutsche Bank, work with the Tucker family and let them stay in their home. What do we do when the banks attack? Stand up, fight back. Okay. And I'd just like to thank BCC for working with the Tucker family and hopefully one day we'll have a cookout, a party here like we did at Salou's house. And, uh, Benjamin Swan. As most of you know, 
Representative Swan has always been a strong advocate for saving families to remain in their homes. He's one of the strongest advocate legislators in the House. And I say to this on a more personal note to my sister-in-law that you are a very courageous woman. I say to Springfield No One Leaves, thank you for helping her in this effort. Your organization has been has made a tremendous impact in our community. And certainly the representative of Swan's office notice you and we appreciate the work that you do in the community. And I say to all of you, continue to stand tall in your fight. And I thank you for embracing those through times and troubles and tribulations of losing their home. A good, hardworking family makes a positive community. And we're all a part of this community. And I say to Dorsha Bank, shame on you. Thank you all. It's, uh, first of all, it's just an honor to be standing in the company of such good people. Uh, I'm very proud of you as citizens of Springfield to stand with our neighbors, the Tuckers, and uh, just stand up for what is right. Uh, I'm very proud of my colleagues on the city council who fought to get the ordinance changed. And now I ask respectfully that we put the pressure on the leadership of the city of Springfield to enforce the ordinance that the city council passed. Uh, applaud yourselves as well, because I know that uh, it's very difficult to stand alone. Uh, and as my mother would say, as great as a soloist may sound, she cannot compare with a chorus. You are, in fact, that chorus today. And I'm very proud to stand before you and say thank you on behalf of the Tucker family and the citizens of Springfield who recognize what the right thing to do is. Hi, everybody. I'm Tim Allen. I actually am the city councilor that represents Ward 7, where we're standing right now. And um, I'm sorry I couldn't make the event last night. There were a couple other things uh, earlier in the, that, that kept me from coming. But I, was, I called today and said I'd try to come tonight. I'm proud to be here. I want to reiterate and, and echo what my uh, friend and colleague Melvin Edwards just said, that uh, if we're going to make Springfield stronger, we need groups like you and you know, fighting, community fighting for things that are right. And people losing their homes is not right, particularly for reasons that aren't good enough. So uh, this is uh, great that you guys are working and supporting people like this. And uh, I stand with Melvin as proud that a year ago when we passed that ordinance, I'm proud it stood up in court uh, whenever that was, two or three weeks ago. And um, we will work to, you know, I'm going to, I'm sure that you probably have done it as well talk to City Hall and see what the problem is with getting some um, compliance with the ordinance uh, going. So. I mean, there's nothing that hits somebody so hard as, as attacking them in their home, really. And this is a different kind of an attack to take somebody's home away for no good reason. And um, particularly when people are trying to figure it out. And uh, so I applaud all your efforts and the efforts of the people here, living here, and, and all the community support you've given them. And uh, pledge to, to help in City Hall to see what we can do to, to prevent any pre prevent situations like this from coming up. So thank you very much. Uh, following the long history and the lead of uh, many, many uh, freedom fighters before us, use civil disobedience to stand up for what we believe is right. Um, that we see these evictions as wrong, as unjust, as immoral, and it's up to us to decide whether or not we let them happen or we stand up in the face of them. So the way that we're going to do the candlelight tonight, um, we want to thank those of them who are lighting them. They look so pretty over there. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Ruben. Tentel. So we're actually going to ask that folks start to kind of line up in front of the house and we're going to make kind of a semicircle starting at that end of the house and going all the way over to my car. Don't worry about leaning on my car. It's falling apart already. <laughs> and we're going to ask that you link arms with the person next to you. Um, and we're, we're going to face the street. We're going to face out. Because, well, not everybody here is necessarily going to risk arrest. A lot of us are, and a lot of, all of us are going to be there to support and to stand with the family, regardless. And so what we want to start to symbolize is that, like we would at, at the Mendez House and like we will here, that we're prepared to stand in front of the house and create a blockade if necessary. 
So give us a few minutes while we get the candles around this way. Uh, 